our demonstration on canning, because you had a garden, now what are you going to do? Um, I'm Linda Nichols, and I am the president of Sustain Jefferson. We're a countywide um, sustainability group, um, and we specialize on some of things like this. So this is Janet McConaughey, and she is our bison head. <laughs> Hello, we're trying to do the mask thing appropriately, but still get you to hear us. Um, I'm Janet McConaughey. I'm also with um, Sustain Jefferson, but I do uh, go to some of the Washtenaw County Green Team uh, events. And so we wanted to show you all of the different things that you can do with water bath canning, which is a good place to start. And we're going to start in kindergarten. So those of you who have canned before, uh, you might be bored to begin with, but for somebody who's never done this before, we want to make sure and cover everything. So um, I'm going to do some things on safety, and then Linda, I will step aside, and Linda will talk to you about ingredients and tools and then I'm going to go back and talk about the recipe while she chops everything up because I have a tremor and if I chop I'll have food everywhere. <laughs> so the very first thing we want to do when you're getting ready to can is to wash your hands. That's very important. You need to use soap and water, do the 20 second thing. Um, if Somebody was, you know, you would expect the same thing out of a commercial place to make your food safe. So do not, uh, you know, be, be lax on these sorts of things just because you're doing it at home. Another thing you want to do, my kitchen sink, and I have read this in several places, that your kitchen sink has more germs in it than your toilet bowl. Because people generally wash their toilet bowl more than they wash their sink. So... You want to go ahead and sanitize, and I would recommend using a weak, you know, a 5% bleach solution or Lysol or whatever kind of thing you use. Vinegar, if you're, you know, being uh, green, and wipe everything down. Make sure that your sink is clean because you're going to take all your vegetables and put them in the sink, and we're going to rinse them all off first and make sure there's no dirt, no insects. I mean, once you can it, insects aren't going to hurt you. It's just added protein, but probably the rest of your family wouldn't appreciate it. Jars. So what I generally do is uh, the beginning of the year, if all my jars are dusty and dirty or full of cobwebs, I bring them up and put them through the um, dishwasher and let the hot cycle take them. And then that way I know they're clean. Um, if I do that one day and I don't use all of my jars, then I don't put them through again the next day. If I'm going to use them, I just fill them with hot water so that there's not a big temperature differential. We're going to make our brine and heat our brine so it's boiling. And you don't want to put, uh, even though these jars are made to take the heat, uh, you don't want to risk it. You want to be able to have the jar hot before you put the hot things in. Um, you want to go on your jars, run your fingers around the lid, make sure there's no nicks uh, or cracks, because if there is, don't even bother. Um, the, the jar lid will not seal. And you can use this jar, and you can make pickles in it, but um, you can't leave it in the cupboard for an extended period. I would use this jar first, put it in the refrigerator and let it sit for a week and then eat these first. You don't need to throw your jars out just because they're imperfect, but don't use them for long-term canning. Uh, let's see here. You want to wear shoes. Please wear shoes. You're going to be dealing with boiling hot liquids. And I myself have, you know, I just had to scrub my floor again. It was all sticky because I was making pickles and little juice drops were everywhere. And so it was, you know, actually tacky. Um, you don't want to be spilling the boiling water or the pickle juice or whatever you're cooking on your feet. And another thing to do is, if you have long hair like me, and get it out of the way because that would be another... Uh, turn off to eating your 
your nice organic home canned stuff if your family has to pick a hair up. Oven mitts are a good idea, although we're not going to be actually reaching in and getting the jars out by hand. There's a tool for that, Linda will show you. And you want to make sure, uh, safety-wise, that you have a valid recipe. Mm -hmm. So here is uh, the ball canning book. Uh, Kerr, K-E-R-R, -R, is another brand of jar. And they have their own uh, recipe book. You can get some off the internet, but make sure that it's a reliable source because you don't want to poison yourself. And if you're doing this kind of canning, pickling, um, you want to make sure that the salt and the acid are adequate to keep your food safe. All right, so I will let Linda talk about the tools. Okay, okay. one thing to point out with the jars um, is the different sizes. So you have what we call the um, regular mouth, which is this size, and you can buy um, the rings or bands as they call them now, and the lids. You cannot reuse these. You need new ones every time you can. And the other size is the wider mouth. And a lot of people like these because they can easily clean them. So when you're going to purchase new lids or bands, make sure you match um, the correct, so you have the correct size. Um, and then as you can tell, they come in, in um, the quartz and the pints and actually quite a big variety of sizes, especially if you're going to do jellies and jams, it's kind of fun to have smaller ones like I have over there for um, giving away as presents. Also, if you don't have a reliable kitchen scale, be sure and get one. Some of the recipes are going to um, ask for pounds of, and so you want to make sure that you can measure your produce um, accurately. Being accurate is really important in canning, especially with jams and jellies. Um, one of the things that uh, both Janet and I use, and we show you two different kinds, are the ways to get the jars out of um, the water. And this just is a nice little grip, like this. And what I usually do is I have a hot pad right underneath and do this and then carry it over to wherever I need to go with it. Very, very handy. Um, also, in, in regards to measuring, if you're measuring a liquid, make sure you're using measurement that's for liquid. Again, we want to be as precise as we can. And then when it's time to fill our jars, um, it's always nice to have something like this because you want to make sure that you're keeping this area clean. You want to be able to put on clean bands and a clean lid. And there's, they come in a couple of different sizes, but I would suggest getting this. It will save you a lot of cleanup time. And then one other thing that I love to use, because I do heat up my bands and lids. Not everyone does that, but I do like to have mine heated. And then you can just lift them out of the hot water like this. Don't ever boil them, but just I like to have mine a little bit warm when I put them on. And then if you're using a recipe where you have to um, watch out for bubbles, a lot of times with jelly you do, um, you can kind of use this as your extra. Um, handy little thing to have. Okay, and some of the common ingredients that you'll use when you're pickling um, is canning salt, canning and pickling salt. So make sure you get um, one like this. Don't make do with table salt. You really want to have the correct salt for your brine. Also, no iodine in salt or it makes right. it cloudy. Yes, no iodine. Um, also, you'll have sugar in a lot of your recipes. Um, there's pickling spice. A lot of recipes will call specifically for pickling spice. Um, if you want a good flavor, go with what your recipe says um, and not try to damp too much. We are going to be baking dill pickles today, so obviously we need cucumbers and we need dill. You can usually get this um, at the store sometimes. The best place to get um, really nice dill is your farmer's market. So if you live in an area that has a farmer's market or grow it, it's pretty easy. And also in this recipe, we will be using garlic. And this is from Janet's garden. And we will be cutting up some onions. And that's in this recipe. And here's some of the lids that you can purchase to make sure you always have fresh lids.
these are all different things that you can do in the water bath canner. So this is the recipe that we're making today. These are sweet kosher dills. So there is a lot of sugar in them. But don't eat too many of them, but they're absolutely delicious. This comes from, the recipe comes from Buck Smith, a friend of ours in <laughs> Sustain Jefferson. Tomato sauce, salsa, uh, jams and jellies here, uh, pickled beets. This is pickled green beans. This is applesauce. This is little tiny baby onions, pickled. And this actually has a grape leaf in it because that helps to make things crunchy. It's got the um, oxalic acid. Mm -hmm. uh, or you could use a green tea bag also if you wanted to, to help make your things crunchy. This is pickled asparagus. This is pepper jelly. Some people like to take this and put it over a block of cream cheese and then scoop it on crackers. It's delicious. You can do fruits, um, pears, peaches, plums, apricots, that sort of thing, but you have to make a sugar solution. This is not pickled. And then these are my pickled. So um, you can do a, any number of things, and this is a good place to start, but you cannot do anything in a water bath that's low acid. It has to be uh, have vinegar and salt in it in order to do this, or sugar as a preservative. Anything that's low acid, like just plain green beans, not pickled green beans, um, uh, potatoes, carrots, all these things you can can, um, beets without the pickling, but they have to be done in the pressure canner because they're low acid, and if you don't do it right, you could injure yourself. Now, I've always learned that um, after you make your product, you let it sit for 24 hours, then you write on here what it is and the year that you did it, but you take the band off. Because if something goes wrong, and say you didn't uh, put this in long enough, and you're, there's some dirt or bacteria, whatnot, yeast in here, and it starts fermenting, you want the gas to be able to escape, to blow the lid off and not explode the jar. My first experience in canning was in 1970. I didn't read a book. I went out along the roadside where I went to college in Lexington, Kentucky, and I picked elderberries, and I brought them home, and I heated them up in a pot, and I put them in a jar, put the lid on it, and stuck them in the cupboard. And a week later, I had a terrible mess to clean up because they exploded <laughs> everywhere. So don't do that. All right, so we're going to talk about the recipe. Now, we're not making a whole recipe. This one is very easy to understand and to uh, cut down the amounts. So it calls for a gallon of vinegar, a half a gallon of water, six cups of sugar, I know it's awful, and a cup of salt. And then however many onion slices, garlic cloves, uh, dill, um, you know, you can put a hot pepper in if you want. Uh, Buck says he puts a hot pepper in some, and then they use um, those pickles in a Bloody Mary. So, um, once you learn the basics, then you can start experimenting with other things. If you put too many hot peppers in, they're low acid, so you got to be careful. Learn that. Yep. All right, so Linda is cutting all that up. What we're going to do is I'm going to probably cut this in half, perhaps. And so instead of a gallon of vinegar, I'm going to use 32 ounces. That's half a gallon, right? Check my mail. <laughs> and lines are vinegar. Now, you cannot get canning lids this year anywhere. But everybody's canning now, so my advice is this winter, when everybody's done canning, load up for next year. Don't wait for canning season. Shannon. Yes. 
Now, this is a new recipe for me. I've never made these. Janet, what kind of um, cucumbers should we use? What varieties for this recipe would be the best? Um, so what should people look for? You know, I guess a pickling cucumber. They're usually listed in the catalogs as eaters, picklers, um, English, hothouse. There'll be different varieties. Um, we are just using today whatever we could scrounge up because we're all with the drought and the heat and the cucumber bugs. We've all had trouble coming up with uh, what we need. So this back one is on now. Mistake in my math, we're just doing a quarter of a recipe. So it was 32 ounces of vinegar, 16 ounces of water. Then it'll be a cup and a half of sugar and a quarter cup of salt. That will be a quarter of everything. Double check that. <laughs> <laughs> and you want to put all of this in a pot and let it come to a boil. So, excuse me. No, I should have found out where the measuring cups are. All right, so I said a quarter cup of salt, right? And a cup and a half of sugar. And so, again, you, you could probably use kosher salt, but it won't taste the same because it's not as salty. But you definitely can't use anything with iodine in it. We're going to let that go to a boil before we add any other things, right? We're going to let that come to a boil. And what we're going to do is uh, wash our jars out mm -hmm. real well, and then we're going to stuff them with all this. And then we will um, put the fill them with brine once all the pickles and stuff are in. Or the okay. Cucumbers in. Now we've got our hot water bath here, which this is hot, but you see the steam coming off. We started that boiling. You have to have enough water in it that it will come up and cover the jars in order to force the air out. Do you have to have a rack inside? Yes. All the companies have got, yeah. You don't want those jars. Yeah. If they're sitting right down on the bottom, the heat's too much. The water needs to be able to circulate underneath it. And then how many, um, how much garlic? However much you want to put in. I usually put two cloves okay. and uh, two onion halves, you know, use what you got. But mm -hmm. I stuff the jar, I lay the jar on its side oh, okay. and stuff it. That way? Okay. Because you can, you know, why waste the pickling juice if you can get them all in there? Mm -hmm. And then another uh, helpful hint is after you eat your pickles, don't throw your good pickle juice out. Cut up carrots or uh, celery, whatever, and throw it in there in your refrigerator for a week or so, and they're delicious. You have another snack without wasting all that good stuff. I don't know if it would be good to pickle more cucumbers or not. Um, and how much dill? Um, well, use what you've got. I mean, I put maybe two. I'm thinking we're going to have three jars. A lot of this, you have, you know, you get a basic recipe with how much garlic, onion, or dill to put in. Um, you make it by the recipe the first time, and then you can sort of uh, adjust those flavors to suit yourself as long as you stay with the basic acidity for mm -hmm. a safety mm -hmm. measure. The other day, I had some yellow cucumbers that somebody gave me. They looked just like lemons, and I made... Uh, some pickles, but I didn't have any more dill. All my dill had gone to seed, so I went out and got tarragon and stuffed my oh, jars yeah. with tarragon, and we'll see how that tastes. 
if it's terrible, all I've done is waste some vinegar or sugar or salt. Cool. <laughs> all right. That one's filled. Right. So is it best to fill all of your jars first and then I, start with the brine? I do. I don't know. That's why I asked, because that's the other when you're doing pickles, the, the water bath canner will hold seven quarts or eight pints. So you want to um, kind of base your recipe on that. So this is a good way. You can just slide your pickle slices right in there and jam them in real close. Tight. You don't want to waste your pickling juice. And they'll be fine. Right? I don't know if we'll have enough to do all four. Oh, I might. I've got one more left, and we'll see if I... So this one's okay. This one needs more. This one... Oh, definitely needs more. Yeah, this if one... you lay them on your That's side, okay. one. There we go. One more. So again, yeah. these lids are only good for one use in canning. Um, but... It doesn't mean you have to throw them away because if you have cereal that you want to store in glass jars or flour that you want to put in glass jars, you can use these lids for that purpose. Um, just make sure you don't try to reuse them for canning because they won't work. So your brine mixture, does it need to boil for any amount of time or do you uh, just, just bring it to... Just until the salt and sugar is dissolved. Okay. You have to make sure that, yep, that it's clear. And how far do you fill your jars? Um, you want to leave uh, some head space. So uh, they say half an inch, you know, head space. You don't need to measure it. Don't worry about it. Just make sure you, you don't want anything sticking up that's going to inhibit the seal. Mm -hmm. So stop right there? Yep, right about there. Is good. And then quickly put on your lid. And when you screw your lid on, you don't want to screw it down as hard as you can. You want it to be firm, but oh, not yeah. cranked. Right. And then you can put that right in the water bath. Okay. And uh, go on to the next one so that it doesn't cool off. What we're aiming for is for the heat to release any air bubbles that are in there and to expand the juice so that we force the air out. And then when you take your jars out, of this uh, canner and you set them on a heat proof surface like this wooden board would be good or you know a cutting board a, a wooden table a folded dishcloth anything that's heat resistant and not too cold you wouldn't want to set it down on something really cold because they're boiling hot um, Can you check your, excuse me. Yep. you want to check to make sure i've got that at an angle it'll straighten up when you get some more in there gotcha it'll be fine um, so when you set your jars out and they start to cool down, it's going to pop that jar lid, uh, make it concave. And so we're going to film that when we take the jars out and hopefully you'll be able to hear the pops because if you do not hear that pop, your jar didn't seal and you better put it in the refrigerator mm -hmm. and use it soon. your lids down it's not a bad idea to take a dish rag and just after you put oh, yeah. your liquid in go around and make sure that your rim is clean and dry yeah we're gonna have enough for the oh i don't think we'll make four no we're right at three all righty we need to cover these with some more water and then we can start timing. All right, so that's what we want, is just to have all the lids covered. And we want it to come back up to a boil, and then we'll time it.
make sure the loop is on tight now. Don't do this at home. <laughs> yeah, make sure you have. You got your. I'll let you do that then. There's another one in the drawer too. Yeah, I always have a yeah to get the water. All right. So you'll find out that these were, and see, it's, it's still bubbling. It's still boiling in there. So now we have to just wait, and you'll hear them go pop, pop, pop as they seal. They cool, and then it will suck the lid back down. These were filled very well. We heard, you know, there's maybe a lot of space in this one. Probably could have put the rest of that in there. But It's good. Mm -hmm. How long does it typically take for them to pop? Not long, generally, five minutes or so. Yeah, I'd say about 25 minutes. out of the water and cooling for about 15 minutes and we were able to hear two of them we call pop which means they're sealed one has not so I'm going to try and look like this to find the one that hasn't it was this one right yeah um, so this means that it has not sealed and we can't trust that we can leave this out we have to refrigerate it now so it'll still taste great and you still got some good pickles but you can't save this one that's got to go in the fridge and then these two you can save in your cupboard or wherever you'd like to keep your canvas. Why don't you tap on them and show oh, them the sure. and okay. how the thing in the center goes down. Yeah, there's a little like dome yeah, okay. here that will go down. I just saw that one. There. Hear that one? It's still up. So that's how you can tell. I also like to tell by looking because I don't want to encourage it falsely. <laughs> Okay, so that's it with the canning of pickles. Let them sit for at least a week, at least, to pickle, to right. up all yeah. the flavors. Yeah, yeah, before you eat those. And they will be good for more than a year, right? How long do you guys keep yours? So however, when I eat them. Okay. If and they then, taste good, they're fine. Yeah, and then um, I have, sometimes for when I do jellies and things, because they look so much alike, you can buy these labels, which will come right off when you wash um, your jars. Or you can just take a magic marker and, and put the year on it. Always put the year on so that you can remember that these were canned in 2020. And um, just a good way to make sure that your food is, is safe to eat. Right. And that's okay. Yeah. Um, and I think that's it. Um, and so now we'll be ready to take questions. <laughs> we have lots of questions. Let's see, what causes the jars to not seal? Well, there's a little rubber gasket around the lid and not 100% of those are perfect. So sometimes it's a defect in that. Sometimes it's a defect in the glass. Um, you know, it can be something as small as a grain of salt sitting on the edge of your glass that keeps the lid from uh, sealing. So it's hard to tell. Yeah. Boy, we got lots of questions. I love this. Okay. Um, do you ever check the lids by trying to open it to make sure it's sealed? You know, you just press on it just a little bit. Um, I don't because they're hot. Mm -hmm. You know, I... I don't disturb my jars for 24 hours. I listen for the pop and then you can tap on them and there's like a little dome in the center of the lid and that dome gets sucked down when it seals. So you can actually look at it and it wasn't uh, evident on the video, but you can see it when you're standing there that that little dome is sucked down. Okay. So. 
Have you ever had an experience where if you press down on a lid that initially didn't pop and then it seals? Has, have you had any late sealers and are they safe? Do you trust them? If it's within 10 minutes or so of taking them out of the water bath, yes. If it's the next day, no. Okay, so you should still use those right away. So for pickles, yep. put them in the fridge and let them sit and use them up. Okay, would beet canning, so canning beets, is that much different than pickles? Well, if you're pickling, you're making pickled beets. No, it's very similar. Um, the recipe is a little bit different, but um, it's the same basic thing. But you're going to take your beets and cook them first and take the skins off. Mm -hmm. And then you put them in the jar, you make the pickle juice, and you pour it in, and then you do the hot water bath. Now, if you're going to can beets, without pickles, if you just want, like if you went into the store and bought a can of beets that was just canned in water, those have to be done in the pressure canner because beets are low acid if you're not pickling them. Okay, all right. Can you make jam, either shelf stable or freezer jam, using frozen berries? I don't see why not. Okay. I personally have not done it just because I grow so much stuff, you know, I have it in the backyard, but like today I was out picking wild grapes. I found this plethora of wild grapes growing along the bypass. And so I went out there and got half a five gallon bucket. So that's tomorrow is making uh, jam or jelly. Okay. That's that's exciting. Oh, there's a pickle. So April, I'm curious about April's comment. She said, her, my husband just finished taking his last load of pickles to the pickle station. So I don't know what a pickle station is, but I'm very curious about that. <laughs> <laughs> we, harvest, we harvest our pickles, we grow them, and then um, he obviously watches them and gets them and then there's these little truck or these little machines that come in and harvest them. We don't do hand picking and on our farm anyways. It's these machines that come in and then they dump them in semi trucks and then he hauls them over to what we call the pickle station. And um, the other day I actually got to see the whole process of how that works, how they dump them in like a water bath and then they go up a conveyor and then based on their size, they get put into, they drop down into different um, like little containers and then they go into these cardboard boxes and there's these um, cooler trucks, like big semi trucks that are waiting while they're getting all these pickles in. And then off they go to, our pickles go to Mount Olive, which I believe is down in like North Carolina, maybe somewhere down there they go. Yeah. How many acres do you have, April? I think that this year we put out, don't quote me, but I think it was like around 30 acres of pickles this year. Holy uh, schmoly. <laughs> that's a lot of pickles. <laughs> yeah. And my 12-year-old my then goes out and he will um, pick um, like bushels of pickles and he'll sell them then to anybody who wants pickles. So, uh, where, <laughs> where are you located, April? We are in um, Ohio, and okay. we are um, by the Great Lakes. We're about uh, okay. 45 minutes south of uh, Toledo, Ohio. Okay, that's so much fun. Well, good. Thank you for sharing that with us. That is so much fun. So you're here in this Canning 101 class. Does that mean you don't make your own pickles that you don't deserve? And you know, I canned them like that before. And then my husband got this thing last year that he actually just took five gallon buckets that he bought from Rural King and made up his own pickle juice and cut up his pickles, or actually he just did whole pickles, put them in these five gallon buckets, put his brine over it, and then sealed them, and then just put them in the fridge, and then the kids have been eating them, like, oh. like this whole, I don't know, they probably lasted for about seven months or so, you know, and everybody, oh. just ate I thought it was weird that he could just put them in the five gallon bucket, like he did it as a test, and to see, uh -huh. and they were still crunchy and good after that time, so they were just wow. eating 
basic ones that, that bought the packs, you know, like the basic pack that you buy sure. from the store and use those. Yeah. Oh, that's super <laughs> fascinating. All right. Thank you so much, April. You're welcome. So, all right. Okay. People want to know, does the glass not break with boiling water? Um, well, that's a good reason to use canning jars and not reuse commercial jars that you got things in because the commercial jars are more apt to break in the canner. <clears throat> the canning, the jars that are made for home canning are heavier and they would break if there was a drastic temperature difference. Um, that's why we ask people to put hot water in and uh, in the jars and let them warm up so that you're not pouring bo boiling brine into a cold jar. And that was, I'm not sure that it made it into the video. You had explained to me that the rack on the bottom of that pot was to keep them also from breaking. That if you just put them in there straight in the pot, that the, the jars would break, correct? Right, there would be no water underneath the jars. It would just be the heat, the high heat on the metal bottom of the pan, which would raise the temperature much more than the hot water. Okay. Yep, so they need to be in a rack off of the bottom. Okay. Um, and then April asked, was the dill what makes the pickle stay crunchy? Or is there something else that makes the pickle stay crunchy? Well, the pickles hopefully are crunchy because you used, number one, the right kind of pickle. Um, we did this little demonstration at my friend Mary's kitchen, and she we made pickles two weeks before, but her pickles were so mushy that her grandkids wouldn't eat them. Same recipe and everything, and the only difference we can figure is that um, it was a different kind of cucumber. Mm -hmm. okay. And so a pickling cucumber is a better kind to use. Um, and I misspoke in the video. I showed one um, jar that had a grape leaf in the bottom and said it had oxalic acid. Incorrect. It had tannic acid. Mm. Tannins are what made it crunchy. And I have read that people use tea bags sometimes in the bottom of their pickle jars for the same reason that there's tannins there and it will help keep the pickles crunchy. If you cook them too long, um, they won't be crunchy. So there's a number of different reasons. And, you know, maybe you'll get a recipe and it doesn't work out very well. We'll find a different recipe. Okay. Well, that's um, a great lead into the next question, which says, what type of um, tea bag? Is it a black tea, a green tea? Is, is there a particular brand or anything you need with the tea? I would say regular Lipton, you know, just, just a okay. regular tea bag. Mm -hmm. But green tea, is that what you said? I don't know how, I, I would have to look it up and see green, black, you know, okay. what, which one has the most tannic acid. Okay. Or, and, you know. and then clearly you should probably remove the string from the bag. Probably. I don't think it would matter. Okay. You're not going to eat it anyway. <laughs> okay. And then um, Mary Beth would like to know, where do you find grape leaves? Um, in my backyard. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I haven't lived in a city for, you know, 40 years. So if I were in town, <clears throat> I'm sure there's got to be people around who have grape arbors or... Um, I think that some ethnic stores sell grape leaves, but they're already canned. I don't know if there's frozen ones. Um, like I said, I, I found, I can go out here and, and pick a thousand pounds of grape leaves probably just by wandering the woods, so. Sure. But yeah. they, they do make canned grape leaves. They do can them. So. Okay. Good, good. And um, 
Kathy posted in the chat that she's read that oak leaves can be used um, in place of grape if not available. Um, have you ever heard of that, Janet? Um, I haven't, but I would not be adverse to giving it a try. Okay. I don't okay. think there's anything in an oak leaf that can poison you, so have at it. <laughs> okay. And then, um, uh, oh, yeah, good. So if anybody needs grape leaves, just contact Connie because she's the supplier, she says. <laughs> okay. And then, or me, uh, I've got lots too. <laughs> and then, um, does it matter if you have softened water? So if your water is going through a water softener, would that make a difference? Uh, that's a very good question. And I would think that it might. I, when I, I have, everybody about around here is on, on well water and I have a softener. So I buy my drinking water and my cooking water in the five gallon jugs, you know, at, at the store, I fill them at the kiosk and, and bring them home. So I'm using uh, reverse osmosis water from the grocery store. Mm. Okay. All right. Well, that, you know, might be something for people to look into if they're having pickle problems, I guess, is checking out their water source. That could be. I did notice in the recipe, it says non-chlorinated water. So, uh, Right. Well, if you're going to use city water and there's chlorine in it, you can just run your water into a big pot and let it sit on the counter overnight and whatever chlorine is in it will evaporate. Okay. All right. And then um, Mary Beth said in here that she uses her brine for at least four to six times more and for her pickles and her beets and um, she just puts her pickles in and in the brine and puts them in the refrigerator with and reuses that over and over again and it's great. Mm -hmm. She also said that she has very um she had bad luck with a recipe that called for soaking your cucumbers in salty ice water so some recipes call for that she said and it makes her pickles very soft so huh well that's supposed to draw some of the water out yeah um and it does you know if you're doing sauerkraut you mix water with cabbage and then all of a sudden you got all this juice so it does take the water out of the vegetables, but um, it might be dependent on the recipe also. Okay. Are um, whole pickles done the same way as sliced pickles? Yes. Okay. All right. And then um, are tomatoes acidic enough to just um, water, just to bath them and not pressure cook? Uh, tomatoes have traditionally been done in the water bath and some of today's hybrid tomatoes may not be acid enough. So uh, to be on the safe side, you can put a spoonful of lemon juice into each quart jar or you can grow the old um, uh, heirloom tomatoes, you know, like San Marzano's and Amish paste and that sort of thing. And um, I can those without any additives and they've been fine. Okay. All right. Excellent. Oh, and then we really did not cover pressure cooking at all. So what is the difference between pressure cooking and a water bath? You get a higher temperature when you can in a pressure cooker because it's a closed system. So the steam builds up inside. And uh, so I do meat in the pressure cooker. If you're, you know, uh, venison, I started out canning venison. Now I can uh, pork and different things when it's on sale. I'll buy some and can it in a pint jar of meat has to be in the pressure cooker at 10 pounds of pressure for about 55 minutes. And a quart jar would go for an hour and 15 minutes. And then you turn your heat off and let it cool. So it's about two hours in the canner for, the, for meat. Um, 
you know, other vegetables like potatoes and carrots and green beans are, um, of course, less time, maybe 10 pounds in 20 minutes. But uh, the pressure canner reaches a higher temperature than 212. That's the important part. You want to get rid of any like botulism spores that might be in there. Botulism is in the dirt and it's everywhere. And so um, it can grow in the absence of oxygen. So if you did it in the water bath canner, uh, just plain green beans with no pickling stuff in there, then um, it would be low acid and you would have your botulism spores in a low um, oxygen environment, which they would produce um, a toxin, which you can't necessarily taste or smell. So that's the danger. That's why you really want to pay attention when you do low acid things. Okay. Is a pressure canner the same thing as a pressure cooker? Like lots of people have um, like an Instapot now. Is that the same thing or is that something you bought specific for canning? Um, I bought it specific for canning way before there was an Instapot. <laughs> oh, okay. I've not done anything with an Instapot, with an so Instapot. I'm not familiar with them. There may be books out there that show you how to do it, okay. but a, a pressure canner is bigger. I mean, you could cook a roast in it or you could cook beans in it in a short period of time like you would in a small pressure canner, the cooker, mm -hmm. um, but if you're going to put that much time into it, you'd like to get your seven quart, quart jars in there. Sure. Okay. All right. I, whew, I think that was all the questions. You did an excellent job, Janet. <laughs> so. Well, thank you. And I know Mary's out there. And I, again, Mary, I want to thank you for letting us use your kitchen. Since uh, Linda and I are out kind of in the boonies and we don't have internet in our kitchen so <laughs> we couldn't do it at home thank you mary you're welcome yes thank you thank you and we did just get a response from um jesse that said that uh jesse teaches instapot classes mm -hmm. and a jar can fit sometimes just one jar at a time but a jar can fit in it so that's great to know <laughs> And now I want to take an Instapot class. So that's so yes. Great. <laughs> yes. So, All right. There's your next topic. Yeah, really. So speaking of next topics, thank you guys all so much. This is part of a video series that's called our One Simple Act virtual series because these simple acts add up to make a big difference to the environment. So next week we're talking about solar energy and how do you evaluate if your home is good for solar. Uh, we have another class this month on growing garlic and um, but there's another one that's, I'm going to put them all in the email to you. So, cause it's escaping my brain. So that has the dates and all of that. So thank you all so very much for joining us this evening. Thank you guys. Good night. Sage and I say good night. Bye Sage. <laughs>